Hello everyone, I'm Carolyn Martin and I am the host of the PNR Rendezvous webinar series. Open enrollment for the healthcare marketplace to obtain health insurance in 2020 begins November 1st and ends December 15th. And perhaps some of you are familiar with the Public Library Association Health Insurance Enrollment Project uh, titled Connecting You to Coverage. Today our speaker will be providing information to help our patrons increase their health insurance literacy while navigating the enrollment process, whether through the healthcare marketplace or through their own insurance plans. But before we begin, I would first like to review a few tips on how to use our webinar system. As you've already noticed, uh, we have muted everyone as they join the webinar, which means that you will be unable to unmute yourselves. After our presenter is finished and we have time, we will have a, you will have an opportunity to verbally ask questions and to make comments. But for now, you can type your questions and comments into the chat box. And just please make sure that it is being sent to all participants so that everyone can see your questions. If you would like access to the closed captioning, the link uh, is posted there in the chat box. And also, it is visible in the lower right corner in the multimedia viewer. For attending today's uh, Ronnie session. session. I'm sorry, I, 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 I can't wait. <laughs> For attending today's PNR Rendezvous session, either live or via the recording, you can get an MLA CE credit. If you would like to receive the credit, please stay on the webinar and we will um, provide the information for you. But also please keep in mind that we would like everyone to take the evaluation, whether you want the CE or not. And today we have Emily Vardell, who is a professor at the School of Library and Information Management at Emporia State University, and has presented on this topic of health insurance literacy a number of times, and we are so glad to have her here with us. So welcome, um, Emily. We're looking forward to your presentation. Thank you so much, Carolyn. I'm really looking forward to being with you all today. Um, so today I'm going to talk about health insurance information needs and share some resources and strategies that you can do, use in your library to help in this arena. And you'll notice in the lower right-hand corner, I have listed my Twitter handle, and I've tweeted out a couple of different resources through that channel as well. So feel free to tag me or retweet or check out the resources there too. So just to give you a sense of what to expect in today's presentation, I'm going to start with defining health insurance literacy, what it looks like, what it encompasses. Then I'm going to talk about partnerships between librarians, ACA practitioners, and community members with a focus on resources to support consumers' use of health insurance. And then I'll conclude by talking about some strategies that could be used to achieve successful health insurance outreach. So as I mentioned, I wanted to open with a, a definition of health insurance literacy. We hear about health literacy a lot, but the idea of health insurance literacy has only recently become part of the research area. And this is a definition that was published in 2013, and it included a new concept that addresses the extent to which consumers can make informed purchase and use decisions, and they say that it includes knowledge, ability, and confidence to effectively choose and use health insurance. And you'll notice there's two aspects here. There's the purchase and the choosing part, and then there's the using the health insurance part. So many of the resources I'm going to focus on today are really looking at the using health insurance part of that definition, but certainly many of them also inform the purchasing and the choosing of health insurance coverage. And again, when we think about using health insurance, there's a lot of things that fall under that umbrella. There are things like how to find a physician, how to fill a prescription, how to use and pay for medications, how to use a health savings account, and even how to use preventive services like mammograms and annual physical. So you can see from these examples here, things like health literacy certainly play a role, but also numeracy and other aspects fall under the umbrella of health insurance literacy. And I wanted to talk a little bit about why librarians are involved in this area. What, what do we have to offer? So this goes back a little bit now. At the 2013 American Library Association Conference, President Obama actually requested assistance from librarians in Affordable Care Act implementation. So we've been asked to take a seat at the table. And even the Institute for Museum and Library Services spoke about our ethical mandate, rather than a government regulation, to assist with providing a face to government rules and resources. 
So again, we do have a seat at the table here, and I hope that the resources I talk about today help you feel like you can um, take up this mantle. We also have, as um, Carolyn was talking about before the webinar started, these uh, calls to action from the Public Library Association. So recently they've been offering some mini grants to help libraries undertake outreach in this area, and they're calling it their Libraries Connecting You to Coverage Initiative. And I'll be featuring some of the resources that they make available throughout this webinar, but I do want to encourage you to check out that link, because they have really done a great job of pulling lots of resources in one place and organizing organizing them in a really intuitive and effective way. So I also want to talk about who we're talking about here. So um, the health insurance marketplace enrollment, these are the numbers. So starting with the first year of coverage that people could have in 2014, we had 8 million Americans covered under health insurance through the health insurance marketplace, all the way to the most recent statistics. Uh, in 2018, we had 11 million, almost 12 million people covered under health insurance, potentially for the first time. So we think about people who may never have had coverage before and thinking about all the things that they might need to use that coverage effectively, going to the doctor for the first time for something like preventative services, not in an emergency type of situation. I also want to mention the large number of people who are covered under employer-sponsored coverage. So 150 million Americans are covered through something through their employer. And if you look at the Kaiser Family Foundation website, they have so many great resources for healthcare data, and I'll talk a little bit about that later in this webinar too. But this is a chart that I pulled that, that shows you the percentage of people in each state that are covered by their employer-sponsored insurance. So if you want to take a look at your state right now, you can see the percentage that might be covered under your state with that type of health insurance coverage. I think we can all agree that the health system in the United States needs some work, and statistics show we spend more on health care than other comparable countries. This quote from the Department of Health and Human Services, which I have out on my desk as a reminder of this work and the importance of it, emphasizes the key role that librarians can play in this arena. It reads, the success of health system reform will depend in large part on the capacity of individuals, families, and communities to make informed decisions about their health. And the key word informed makes a direct connection with the skills that librarians are equipped with to help individuals, families, and communities, as the quote states. So I'm going to continue now and turn towards the idea of partnerships and resources to support consumers' use of health insurance. So this is from an article that I published with Deborah Charbonneau in 2017, and it was published in The Reference Librarian, and it offers a, a variety of librarian roles that can be undertaken to address health insurance literacy concerns. So um, on the left-hand column, you can see the, the roles, and I'd be interested in the chat box. If one of these really resonates with you, please let me know. Um, I'll talk about many of them throughout the course of the discussion today, but I'm really going to start with the information provider role, and what does that look like? So you can see on the right-hand column, there are some suggestions of strategies like hosting programs or information sessions, providing easy-to-read materials, and helping to decipher frequently used health insurance terms. So what I'm going to do now is turn to how can I do that. It might, sound, it might sound really overwhelming to think about undertaking that type of research, that type of work. So I'd like to offer some resources that might be able to help you provide that type of assistance. So some of the ones that I'll be talking about today include Just Plain Clear, My Health, My Voice, From Coverage to Care, resources from AHRQ and Medline Plus. And again, as I show in the right-hand corner, I'll be tweeting out some of these throughout the course of the webinar. When people think about health insurance, this is sometimes what they think about. Like, they're so overwhelmed, very benefits, many coverage. It makes no sense. What can I do? How can I parse down this complicated language? So a resource that I most recently came to hear about is called Just Plain Clear, and it is actually a uh, resource, uh, it is a glossary of health insurance terms. 
This is a resource, as you can see in the URL there, it's a .com. It's from United Healthcare, so it is created by a health insurance company, and we always want to be um, very careful when using resources to assess the authority of who's providing them, but I don't see any um, potential conflict of interest here. I think it's really well done. They really have a passion for explaining health insurance terminology as uh, basic as possible. And I'm about, about to show you an example, but I just wanted to first go through that home page, just how it looks. As you can see on the left there, you can search by word. It's a Google type search. And then on the right, right, you can also browse by letter. And in the upper right hand corner, you might be able to see the entire glossary is available in English, in Spanish, and in Portuguese. So it's a really great resource to use, especially if you're working with populations that might not speak English and you'd like to provide them with definitions, this might be a resource that you could turn to. So just to show you an example of what one of the definitions might look like, this is the definition for deductible. And if you want to take a quick look, you can see they clearly de define it, and then they provide an example of what that looks like. They have some cross-referencing with other related terms, like their health insurance and plan. And then on the right, you can easily toggle to a translation of that, that definition. And it's not just Google Translate doing it. They have people that are writing those translations of the definitions. So um, this is a great resource to turn to if you are trying to help people uh, decipher some of the really complicated health insurance terminology that can be used. Another resource that I'd like to recommend is My Health, My Voice. So My Health, My Voice is an excellent example of a resource developed specifically to help people use their health insurance. And as their homepage states, My Health, My Voice came out because of a need. Newly insured women are having trouble using their health insurance coverage. And this was uh, created with a, a partnership between the Robert Wood Foundation and Raising Women's Voices, Black Women's Health Imperative, the Merger Watch Project of Community Catalyst, and National Women's Health Network. And I'm going to keep continuing to show you a couple more things that they include on their My Health, My Voice resource. So here is a list of the type of promotional materials that can be printed and accessed from their website. And while it was specifically developed with women in mind, it really works with a diverse audience and is available in Spanish and English with several print-ready resources, which as I mentioned are listed here on the slide. Um, the step-by-step -step guide, for example, includes a lengthy section with clear, easy-to-read information on understanding costs when using health insurance. For example, it provides descriptions of premiums, deductibles, co-pays, and co-insurance um, with a, a specific focus on cost. And while it's important to talk with people, and why is it important to, do, to talk with people about using health insurance? As this graphic explains, it's important to encourage individuals to use their health insurance to cover preventative health services, to stay healthy. This is really something that needs to be emphasized for people who are being covered for the first time or using their health insurance cover for the first time. People who did not have health insurance previously may have very well have relied on the emergency room to treat health concerns in the past, and so they may not be as familiar with using a primary care provider to access chronic disease care and preventive care. Another resource I wanted to be sure to highlight was from Coverage to Care, which is from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And in addition to um, some of the things you might, list, you might see listed here, from Coverage to Care uses a roadmap analogy to help individuals learn to use their health insurance and interact with the healthcare system. And I'll be highlighting a few of these sections as we continue in our discussions, but I think it's a really helpful analogy to think about the roadmap and for people to see step by step what goes into accessing their coverage. And I just wanted to make sure you knew, if you don't already, you can order print um, copies to be mailed to your library, to your institution. You can also print from their websites. So I've included some URL links here to, um, and I don't think Carolyn didn't mention this at the beginning, but we will be sharing these slides. So if that's been a question that's been asked in the chat, I want to make sure people knew that. You will have access to these slides for your use later on. Um, so there on the bottom, you can see the links to get order, either order print copies to be mailed to your library or print them yourself. 
I also wanted to make sure you were aware of the resources that the Public Library Association has recently made available for promotional materials. All of these listed here are PDFs that can be customized for your library, and that's really what they're designed for. They've made them available and they want libraries to use them, customize them for their needs. I've recently been conducting interviews with public librarians who received funding from PLA for this kind of outreach, and every single person I've talked to has mentioned this has been a, has been a helpful resource for them, that they've used these materials, have customized them, have printed them, distributed them in a lot of different variety of ways. Um, people have gotten really creative about where they put the posters, but they've used these to um, encourage people to come to the library for enrollment events or just bring awareness to the fact that the open enrollment period is going on right now. So I'd really recommend checking out these resources from the Public Library Association. They're really great um, avail publicly available materials that you can use and customize for your institution, for your library. This is um, some five clear steps that are often used across many different health insurance materials. It's used in From Coverage to Care. It's used in that My Health, My Voice I was showing you. It's also used in all the PLA materials. I think it's a really helpful way to think about um, how to talk to people about using their health insurance. Um, they're especially helpful for people not as familiar with the health insurance process or the healthcare system in general, including people who might have recently moved to the United States and aren't familiar with our complicated system. So I'm going to use now these five steps to show you the kinds of consumer health resources available to assist with this process. So first, um, you can also, I wanted to make sure you knew that uh, NNLM, including the um, host for this webinar, as well as another region. They're making paper printed copies of related materials available for you all, including this really great look at these five steps. So the same five steps I just showed you. Um, you can actually order a poster or multiple posters of these five steps that you could display in your library or make publicly available in your community. So um, check out that link there. It's nnlm.gov slash all of us with those dashes there slash order. And they have a lot of really good resources, not even specifically just on health insurance. They've got stuff on clinical trials, other resources. So make sure to check that out. That's a really great place to have things freely available and delivered to you uh, that you can use in your library. And they also, of course, make the PDF available if that's more convenient to you. But wanted to make sure you were aware that the five steps are available in printed form for your library. So now we'll turn to using those five steps to look at related resources. So I'll start with learning how to use your insurance card. So as we, most of us know, when you enroll in health insurance after a waiting period, a couple weeks, several weeks, um, you get that health insurance card in the mail. And again, if this is something new to you, if you're newly signing up for health insurance, either through the insurance marketplace or through your employer, um, you might get that card in the mail and be kind of overwhelmed and not really understand exactly how to use it. So this is a resource that is a part of the From Coverage to Care type of resources from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. And it's specifically designed to help people understand how to use their insurance card. So they offer this sheet on how to decode, as they say, your insurance card and this handout, which I'm showing you a small version on the left-hand side. As you can see on the right-hand side, it's also available in several languages from CMS. And this unique aspect makes it very valuable for those working with populations for whom English is not a native language. It's a little bit difficult to navigate to exactly where to find this. Um, it used to be easier on their website, and then when I went back to double check all my links, it was harder to locate. So those, those uh, URLs that I've embedded on the right side of the PowerPoint here will lead you to those handouts in those different languages. And again, we'll have these slides available to you at the end so you can access the, the URLs. But I wanted to make sure you knew about this. It's pretty handy, um, and again, available in multiple languages, which is a really great resource. I'm now going to turn to the next two steps. I'm going to kind of cover them together. They include choosing a primary care provider who takes your insurance and then making an appointment to see your primary care provider. So again, encouraging people to do preventative type of care and not wait until there's an issue and a, and a problem that needs to be addressed. 
Before I turn to these resources, I wanted to stop and just check and see if there were any questions from what I have covered so far. Uh, uh, that's helpful. Awesome. I see, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay let's, let's see. There's one. Um, have you reached out, out to Kaiser? Kaiser? And so I'd love to know um, in what sense, in terms of hearing about the kind of research, the uh, kind of work that they're doing in the area of health insurance and health insurance outreach. If so, I have not, and I'd love to learn more. So if you have specific suggestions about um, how to approach them, not necessarily who to contact, but just in, in what kind of capacity, that would be really helpful. And people are, I, I'll, I'll go back up to the top and do them in order. Um, so, yes, yeah, so the help with the LGBTQ community, definitely. Um, I actually recently had an article and a chapter on this topic that I can try to locate uh, maybe during the Q&A period to share that's specifically on LGBTQ outreach and, um, and health, health information. And my section was specifically on health insurance. Um, some specific things that are relevant when it comes to the LGBTQ community are things that are kind of tangentially related to the Affordable Care Act, things like the fact that the Affordable Care Act mean, makes it so that insurance companies cannot deny on pre-existing conditions. And so things like people who are HIV positive, uh, people who are trans, people who require um, specific specialty types of care cannot be denied coverage after the Affordable Care Act because of pre-existing conditions, which is really key for that community. Um, and there are specific resources related to LGBTQ health information outreach in Medline Plus, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, and you probably are aware of as well. Um, so those are two ideas that come to mind, but again, I'll try to remember at the end to link you to those that article in the chapter um, in case you want to learn more about that. Um, and then I saw a note about um, the resources applying to whether it's a state market Place or federal marketplace? Yes. So the resources that I'm showing are um, general enough that they apply to anyone and anyone who is, interest, who is interested in learning more about their health insurance. So they could be getting it through the state marketplace, the federal marketplace. They could be getting it through their employer. Um, they could be getting Medicare, Medicaid. So these resources are really designed to teach people the basics of health insurance and they're going to be relevant no matter um, what type of insurance they have. There are obviously going to be some aspects that are really specific um, to different types of insurance and some of the resources I've shown, if you drill down further into the resources, they'll talk about things like what's a bronze plan, what's a silver plan in the marketplace. And so that's going to be really specific to healthcare.gov, for example, but the resources that I'm showing um, should be relevant no matter where someone is getting their coverage. It's a great question. I think I've addressed the ones I'm seeing here, and we will have time for more questions at the end. I just wanted to stop just in case there were questions before we continue. Okay, so now I will turn, as I mentioned, to some resources on choosing a primary care provider and making an appointment with a primary care provider. So this video um, is a great resource for this specific topic. It talks about um, individuals who are looking for a primary care provider and gives some advice like looking for names of providers covered under their health insurance by looking online at the insurance company's website, calling the insurance company, looking at the handbook provided by the insurance company. Again, this might be a new concept for many, even people who've had coverage for a while when it comes time to figure out who's in network, that can be a little confusing. So these videos are really helpful to break down exactly how can I go about finding a provider that's going to be covered under my plan. They also recommend things like asking friends or looking online to see other people's opinions about primary care providers. And again, this is an area where we probably as librarians would not want to offer advice on which doctor to go to, but we could point to resources with available information. And these videos that were made from Coverage to Care by CMS are available in English and in Spanish, and they're great uh, resources for people for um, whom potentially uh, written materials might be challenging. It's really nice to offer video materials as, a, as another option for accessing information. 
One of the things that might be very overwhelming for someone who hasn't interacted with the healthcare system is making that phone call to the insurance company to find out what their available options are. And My Health, My Voice addresses this concern by offering sample scripts that show individuals what kind of questions they might expect when calling member services. And this approach may address hesitation to make that phone call, which is one of the many barriers individuals might face when using their health insurance coverage for the first time. I think it's really helpful to see it broken down this way, potential questions that you might ask or that they might ask, and how you could respond. It's really helpful to see that so you feel like you've, you've um, seen it before and it won't be completely overwhelming when you see it for the first time. Another resource that I'd like to recommend um, that is specifically designed for preparing for your first visit to your new primary care provider, so after you've chosen the provider and made the appointment, you're actually getting ready to go to that appointment. They've done um, some great work at AHRQ to help people feel prepared for that. So they tell, things, tell them things like, be prepared to share your family history. As we know, when you go to the doctor, they'll ask you, what did your grandma have? What did your grandfather have? What did your mom, your dad? Again, someone who's interacting with the healthcare system for the first time or for the first time in a while may forget about that or not know about that. It's really good to know, to be prepared for that because it may require calling people, um, asking people questions in order to be able to fill that out uh, completely and accurately. Um, they also encourage them to write down questions, which is really key and important things that you might want to ask the doctor because as uh, research has shown, it's really intimidating for people to come into the doctor. They come in and completely forget their questions, or um, they may not understand or, or follow everything the doctor is saying, remember everything the doctor has said. So writing the questions down in advance um, that you might have, and then also some questions that you might be able to ask after the doctor says something to you. So things like, what is this task for? When will I get the results? Why do I need this? All there, are there alternatives? Are there side effects? So this is really empowering the patients to make the most out of these visits, to feel like they have the um, skills that are needed to navigate this successfully and make sure that their needs and their voice is being heard. My Health, My Voice actually makes a blank copy of this My Family's Health Story type form available. So this could be something you could print out for a patron, have them take it with them, and then they could spend some time filling it out um, so that they can then bring it to their doctor's office and feel prepared to answer these questions when they do make that appointment and go to that appointment. A couple of other things I wanted to recommend from AHRQ, they have a resource called the 10 questions you should know, and this is before you go to the doctor. Again, they're things like um, your family history, things you should be prepared to answer. Um, there, and then they offer some things like questions to ask before your appointment, ask during your appointment, ask after your appointment, and even building your own list of questions. So this is, again, really empowering people to make the most out of that visit so that they're not completely overwhelmed when they go into the doctor but feel like they have the tools to succeed. And lastly, we'll take a look at the fifth step that's listed here under the five steps for using health insurance wisely, and that's visiting your primary care provider and taking follow-up action. From Coverage to Care offers some very helpful information for this step. In particular, I like how they emphasize the importance of feeling comfortable with the healthcare provider. And they make it clear that the patient has the option to choose another provider if they are not comfortable with the first person they went to. I think this is really key to addressing the power dynamics at play with doctors and patients. And so it's important to remind people you don't have to go back if you didn't feel comfortable, if you didn't feel heard, for whatever reason. Um, step seven that I've kind of highlighted here in the left-hand side, uh, this is part of the roadmap. Ask the patient to decide if the provider is right for you. And step eight outlines the steps an individual should take for follow-up action. And one of those is to fill any prescription that you were given and take them as directed. 
So that's where you might want to emphasize Medline Plus as a great resource to find out more information about medications. This could be the first time someone's taking a medication and it's a good place to go for additional information and again to have them feel equipped to understand what they've been prescribed and learn more. And lastly, I'm going to turn to the Achieving Successful Health Insurance Outreach, and we're going to look at a couple of examples of librarians who've undertaken work in this area that might provide some springs of inspiration for you um, for the kind, of research, re, the kind of resources and outreach that you could undertake in this area. So again, I'll, I'll turn to this, this list here that I um, showed you at the beginning. We've looked again at the kind of things that an information provider might want to have in their toolbox. But there are also roles like information mediator, instruction librarian, information manager, literacy advocate, librarian researcher. I'd love to hear from you now if there are specific ones that um, resonate with you, that um, dovetail nicely with your work, or ones that you've used either in the health insurance literacy arena or in other arenas as well. Um, you might undertake this kind of work at your library. So if you want to add to the chat if any of these um, particularly resonate with you. So I see instruction, definitely. Thanks, Rhonda. And on the right side, you can see some strategies for an instruction librarian, um, especially in the area of health insurance, might be to develop materials for individuals with limited literacy skills, as this is a specific concern with this area, if not all. And then again, evaluate the suitability of existing materials. There are materials out there, so you'd want to look at them, see if they need to be um, modified for your audience. And we have another vote for instruction, someone for advocate, great. So assisting individuals in locating materials is a great way. Host programs, wonderful. Yes, that's a great approach to take. Host programs from agencies. You can host um, Affordable Care Act navigators at your library or other people who can speak on these topics and other topics Literacy Advocate again, and David says we can provide health information to patients to, so they can better communicate with their physicians, certainly. That, that is the dream. That is wonderful. All right, I'm going to continue. Feel free to continue to add to the chat if there are other roles that, that come to your mind. So we'll turn and look at an example of an information mediator. This is Kay Hogan-Smith, and she's the Community Services Librarian and Director of Health InfoNet of Alabama. Um, she does things like build partnerships with public librarians and community organizations to support dissemination and use of quality health information. She assists public librarians seeking authoritative resources to address Affordable Care Act information needs. So she works in the medical library. She has public librarians that kind of turn to her as a, an expert of locating information in this area, and she is able to then put the pieces together, the good um, authoritative resources with the public librarians, and mediate in that way. She does things like email notices to public librarians in her network about training opportunities, she locates information on coverage tiers for patients and refers to community clinics that provide free care. And she also assists faith-based faith -based organizations with setting up enrollment events with trained navigators. So those are some ideas that might work in your library or that you might feel equipped to do. I see um, Athanasia wrote, active community connector with navigators and patrons. That is exactly the kind of work that I'm talking about. That is wonderful. I'm so glad to hear that you're doing that or that that resonates with you. Here's, um, this is from a uh, chapter in the book, The Medical Library Association Guide to Answering Questions About the Affordable Care Act, and it's looking at potential community partners that you might be able to work with in this arena. So we have faith-based organizations, cultural organizations, adult literacy programs, schools, colleges, and universities, and emergency food pantries are just some of the, re the com potential community partners that you could partner with to do work in this area. And I'd love to hear from you again at this point. So um, I invite you to add the names or the types of groups that you've partnered with in the chat box.
So again, I'm asking if you want to share some of the groups that you've partnered with, if you'd like to add that. So Jessica writes food pantries, great. Barbara writes, local hospital who provides affordable care act application counselors, wonderful. And it can be hard to know if you um, want to connect with the navigator who to go to, and a local hospital or clinic is a great place to find out um, who those people might be. So I'm glad to hear that's worked for you. Naomi shares cultural organizations here in Arizona, wonderful. That is a really great place to go to as well. Rhonda writes, community health organizations for at-risk groups. Also a great idea. Thanks for being very um, uh, providing a great example of what a community, which community health organizations might be appropriate to partner with. DC writes some public libraries host shift counselors for Medicare patrons. Great, definitely. So we have people that, are, that might host um, events for navigators, but also even counselors for Medicare patrons. Deborah writes um, Watcom Agency of Healthcare Advocates. So that's another place um, that she's partnered with. David writes, Health Education Department with the Library and Physician Nurses and Social Workers. That sounds like a great collaboration of a lot of key players, librarians, nurses, and social workers. What can't we do with that group? That, that sounds fantastic. Rachel writes, Talking to the County Representative who works with Medicaid and Medicare. Wonderful. One of the librarians that I have interviewed um, who received funding for this kind of outreach from the Public Library Association talked about printing out some of those flyers that I showed you earlier and going to some of the um, businesses and factories in her area and talking with the HR uh, representative at that business, at that factory, and asking them to first post this flyer about an enrollment event at her library, and then just letting them know, hey, the library is here to offer assistance with this. Um, we can, we're going to have an event with an enroller there, but we can also help people understand the terminology. And it really um, came as a big surprise to the HR reps that the library would be doing work in this area. So you never know um, who might be an appropriate partner to talk with, who could be the person to open their eyes for the kind of work that libraries can do. And so that was another way to get into the community in a different way and encourage them to let their, um, let their employees know about the resources available to them. Because even if someone works, even if they work full time, um, they may not be getting health insurance from their company for a variety of different reasons. So they may need assistance looking for coverage outside of that domain. I also wanted to make sure, again, to plug another resource. This one is, again, from the Public Library Association Guide, and it's talking about becoming a champion for health insurance coverage. It's a really helpful, I want to say it's about a 10-page guide um, that's designed for public library staff, but it's certainly not exclusively relevant to public libraries. Um, for people with uh, limited prior knowledge of health insurance and resources to educate and assist consumers with coverage enrollment, and they do a great job of breaking down the different steps that are involved. They use a lot of excellent infographics to, um, to get these points across, plug a lot of great free resources, and really help people feel empowered to do this kind of work. Because I know it can, you can have a little bit of imposter syndrome here. How could I possibly help in this arena? Um, so hopefully resources like this can help you feel like I can become that person. And so even if you can't undertake all the navigator training, because it is several, several hours of training to become one, a, a licensed Affordable Care Act navigator, you can at least become a champion for health insurance coverage and understand the basics and, and understand who to connect people to. So this is another good resource that I'd recommend um, checking out if you'd like to learn more about this kind of work. Another example of a role that could be undertaken is a programming host. So this is Mary Ellen Nolan, who is a consumer health librarian at New Hanover County Public Library in North Carolina. And she does things like proactively build connections with relevant organizations, so she's not waiting for a, the open enrollment period to start or for um, a particular in, uh, initiative in this area. She's built those uh, connections with organizations in advance, and then she can turn to them to help provide um, different things. So they, she provides the space. And then she might bring in the organizations to do the enrollment events, to uh, promote information in this area, to provide uh, tutorials on, on related topics. 
So she provides a space for both individual help and group programming. And again, she invites authoritative speakers to present. And that could be navigators or that could just be people with an expertise in this area. So this is certainly an area where librarians can get involved and provide both, both the space and also the connections needed. So um, Rich is asking a question, how difficult is it for someone who doesn't work to get health, co health coverage? In New York, people are fined if they don't have coverage when they file taxes for the year. That is correct, yes. Um, that is part of the individual mandate that is a part of the Affordable Care Act. And so um, if you don't have health insurance coverage, you can have a penalty. Um, there are exceptions to that. If people make um, a certain amount of money, then they do, do not have to have coverage. Um, so if they do not have coverage from their employer, for example, then you definitely want to connect them with healthcare.gov. That's going to be the best place for them to get coverage if they don't have it through Medicaid or Medicare, for example. But um, probably you're, you're going to send them to healthcare.gov, and that's where they can go to get the healthcare coverage. And there's lots of different options there of all kinds of um, price levels. There are subsidi subsidies available to help cover this um, if somebody can't afford health care coverage. Um, so that is a general gist. Um, I can go into further details if you want to follow up. I, I can provide more. But yes, um, the general gist of what you said is correct. People do have to have health coverage now. So um, if they don't have it through their employer, the best place for them to connect is healthcare.gov, uh, depending on the state. Um, so if some states might have state-based um, marketplaces, in which case they'd want to go there. But I'll just say healthcare.gov in general, um, since we have people from all over the U.S. on this webinar. Yeah, thank you. So if you'd like to host an enrollment event at your library, PLA offers this really great checklist for how to facilitate effective um, health insurance education and enrollment. So you can see on this, I did a quick screenshot, but I'd encourage you to check out the whole PDF there if this is something that you're thinking about undertaking. But they have some objectives there that you might have for your programming and thinking about the outcomes that you might want for your participants so that you can really be um, strategic about the event that you hold. Another um, role that you might undertake is librarian researcher, and this is Michelle Malloy. When I spoke with her, she was the research services coordinator at Georgetown at their medical library. And in this role, she does things like provide one-on-one -on -one assistance to patrons, like reference interviews. She encourages the use of a multitude of resources. So when we're talking about health insurance, it might not be appropriate to only go to published literature. You might have to look at gray literature to research insurance-related topics. And she also uses clinician contacts for help with terminology and clarifying questions when needed. This is a, a really complicated um, arena, and so sometimes it might be helpful to know who you can turn to. And it may just be a personal friend who's a nurse or a physician. It may be somebody that you know in your institution who's got some expertise in this area. If you've hosted an enrollment event with a navigator there, it might be that person that you're able to turn to to ask some, some specific clarifying questions if you need to. I'm going to show you now a couple of resources that you can use specifically for undertaking health insurance research. This is probably my favorite place to go, the most user-friendly, uh, certainly, of the um, tools that are out there. This is the KaiserFamilyFoundation.org website. And if you um, access it there, how I have it there with state data, you can look at a variety of different measurements. but. The ones that are probably most relevant to this talk today is health coverage and uninsured, health insurance and managed care, and health reform. And so you can look at your state, you can compare across states, you can compare across times. That um, map that I showed you at the beginning of the webinar that showed the number of people who have employer-sponsored insurance by state, that came from this. That came from health coverage and uninsured, from that menu option there. So you can either choose the category or you can choose the location if you want to look specifically at your state. But this is a great place to go. People just have general questions like, how many people in Minnesota have coverage from their employer? You can find that out here. So this is a good place to go for some of that initial research. 
There's also a limited amount of data available at healthcare.gov. I will say um, I've been doing pre presenting on this topic for a while, and what is available here has evolved over time and across presidential elections and things like that. So um, this is really for the heavy duty researchers. My guess is that it wouldn't be as relevant for most, but I just want to make sure you are aware that it's out there. Um, so this is data specifically on who's getting coverage through healthcare.gov. And they break it down in a variety of different ways. But if people are looking at some really hardcore data relating to the Affordable Care Act, this might be a good place to turn to. And then another place that I recently discovered is the Universal Health Coverage Portal from the World Health Organization. So WHO makes this portal available, and they are comparing health coverage across nations. So if you want to see how the United States compares to other countries, this is your place to go. So um, I'd really recommend checking this out if you have people with questions about how the U.S. compares to other places. This is um, a really helpful resource for that kind of work. And as you can see, they've got some pre-made graphs, but you can also navigate specific aspects as well, from coverage to financial protection to health expenditures to health equity. And the last role I'm going to talk about today is librarian advocate. This is Michelle Kraft, who's the senior medical librarian at the Cleveland Clinic. And she does things like teach continuing education classes on the Affordable Care Act, and she advocates for demonstrating the impact of libraries. So especially if you work in a clinical or hospital setting, um, some other aspects of the Affordable Care Act are showing how um, you uh, use money effectively in your hospital, how you have low readmission rates, so you don't have people coming back and forth and back and forth to the hospital, but you treat them and they go home and they're healthy. Um, all that is also a part of the Affordable Care Act. So librarians can help do some work on how um, we can say the libraries are assisting with this, how are libraries cutting down on healthcare costs, that kind of thing. And a resource that, again, I'd like to recommend is this is a um, resource from the Public Library Association. They actually have this PowerPoint template here. It's called Be a Health Advocate for Your Library with this presentation template. And that's a freely available template that you can download, and you can talk about how the library plays a role in health and health insurance. So um, I'd really, if you have to do any kind of presentation in this area, you might want to download that and check it out as a resource. It's really nice that they make that available and encourage you to customize it. They want you to use it, so don't feel bad about using someone else's slides in this, in this case. Um, so they have some ideas of how you can showcase the roles of libraries in um, addressing critical health issues in your community. So uh, things like getting health data to plan your services, and I showed you a couple of resources just now on how you might be able to get some data to plan your services. Get the community active, like hosting yoga and 5Ks, promoting nutrition, and they've got some great ideas of how to do that there, and supporting staff to get educated about their own health and wellness. So many of these are more generally health-related, but certainly um, play a role in keeping people healthy and, and able to use their health insurance effectively. So the possible roles really abound. Um, I've given you some suggestions today, but there are certainly more than what I could cover now. Um, if you have other ideas of, of ones to add to the list, please add those in the chat. I would love to hear your ideas on the areas where um, librarians can play a role in providing health insurance information and helping people really feel empowered to use it and be the healthiest that they can be um, with the coverage that they have. There are a couple of uh, print resources I wanted to recommend to you. So this is a book entitled Libraries in the Affordable Care Act by Francisca Goldsmith. And um, it has, I wanted to highlight a couple of chapters that are really relevant for our talk today. They include health insurance and insurance exchange structures, ethics and legal matters related to healthcare information services. And I've heard um, lots of librarians have expressed concerns with how do I do this in an ethical way, in a non-biased way. So that's a great place to go for that kind of information. And then some ideas on programming to promote a health community, which is like what I was just talking about in one of the previous slides. And so this would be really relevant, uh, especially for information mediators, programming hosts, and librarian advocates. 
And then I have to disclose that this is my book, uh, but hopefully it's helpful um, for the potential roles here. I've in identified information mediator, research support, and presentation support. If you do that kind of work, um, some of the chapters that might be especially relevant to this talk are the role of the librarian, the health insurance reference question, a step-by-step -step approach, so how to especially answer the health insurance questions that might come to the reference desk. And then there's a chapter on recommended Affordable Care Act information resources for consumers and another chapter on resources for practitioners. So my goal is that individuals are empowered with access to quality health insurance information and have the skills to understand the information and make a health insurance choice that matches their health needs. This would save people money and hopefully increase their health statuses, reducing health disparities. And I'd love to hear what your goals are as well. Please feel free to add them to the chat box. And I'll just conclude with my question slide. Thank you so much for your time today. I would love to hear any questions that you might have um, and any additional thoughts you have on the roles and things that librarians can do to help address this really important need in our communities. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Emily. You, Emily. <laughs> this has been really been great. great. Um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and post Emily's link to her uh, slides in the chat box because I'm sure that many of you want to have access to those links that she um, included in her presentation, and so those are all available through that link that you see in the chat box. So now it is your turn to ask questions. If you would like to be unmuted, um, there is, I believe, a little hand that you can um, raise. I have hidden the hand. Oh, did you? Oh, I was going to say, I was looking for that, and now I don't see it, Maddie. <laughs> I got rid of it. Or you can just uh, type in the chat box to please unmute you. Yeah. Um, as well as go ahead and continue to uh, type your comments or questions in the chat box if you prefer as well. Um, and if you have any of your goals that you would like to share with others, and Emily, feel free to uh, go ahead and put those in the chat box as well. Um, this has been a huge amount of information. It's been very timely. So if anyone has any questions, this is a great time to ask Emily. She's quite the expert on this topic. So um, just let us know. No. And I pasted, um, because we had that question about LGBTQ resources, I pasted first the article and then the book with and one of the chapters is specifically on health-related um, outreach, so I just want to make sure to share those too. But yes, I'm happy to answer any additional questions that you all might have. I'm also putting in the chat box the link to those posters that uh, Emily mentioned earlier. Uh, you can order for free, download that regard um, the health insurance enrollment in question. I just wanted to mention that I think for some reason Emily's computer is um, making us echo. It's what? You're, I think, I think, I think I we're think echoing through your computer. Oh, hmm. okay. <laughs> I'll mute myself unless I need to talk. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. And I also want to add in the chat box the link to our uh, main PNR Rendezvous website. You'll see there is uh, recordings and future sessions, but uh, back in June we had uh, PLA and a couple of um, public libraries who had participated in their many grants for health insurance uh, talk about some of the work that they were doing with that money. Uh, and it's called Connecting You to Coverage, and you can access that recording from that uh, main PNR rendezvous link. Well, while people are thinking, I have a question for you, Emily. Um, I was wondering for uh, libraries, especially that are very rural or remote, what kind of connections or who could they connect with to help provide some of that information? That's a really great question. Um, so I would say the, the first thing that comes to mind, of course, are local clinics, um, that that would be a, a natural place to go to. I'm just thinking now again on those interviews I've been conducting with public librarians, and many of them have talked about um, at least 
talking through this with, with other libraries that are somewhat near them, even if they are a little more rural, um, kind of having that network of other libraries in the area to at least bounce ideas off of. Um, people, in terms of outreach, uh, many people have used that funding from PLA to boost social media posts. And I know that's not always an option for everyone, but if you're thinking about how you want to market the kind of work that you're doing in this area, that could be something to, to consider. Um, but that could be a way, again, um, to kind of reach people in a rural setting. You can, through Facebook, um, boost posts in a specific geographic area, so you could try to target people in a, that are around you. Um, one librarian talked about doing that for this, for um, the open enrollment period is sort of a trial for the census, which I thought was really interesting. So um, even if you try boosting a post on this topic and you don't um, necessarily get as many people, but you get a lot of likes, well, then you know, okay, people are interacting with this information and maybe this will work for another project. Um, so that's another idea that you might want to try in a rural setting. Um, yeah, um, and then again, thinking about how to find navigators, how to bring speakers to a library if you wanted to do something like that. I think again, clinics or hospitals are going to be um, the best place to go, and they might, if if they are not um, particularly close to the library, they might be able to connect the person with someone that is more local. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, I think there are a couple comments, comments in the yeah. chat. Yeah, so Rachel shares her goal is to be proficient enough to judge the quality of health resources and help patrons navigate those sources. Definitely, that's a great goal. I hope it's been helpful to see at least a few more resources that maybe you didn't know about before. Um, but certainly helping patrons navigate those sources is a really important step. Um, as we know, patrons have all kinds of levels of skill in terms of navigating um, even just, you know, from needing help with basic computer skills to being more proficient. It really is is important to think about how to help support that individual. I'm glad to hear Elaine, Elaine has shared that they're helpful resources. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara, for being here. Appreciate it. And I know we're getting close to the top of the hours, so we want to make sure uh, that people have access to the class or session evaluation and to get their CE. And uh, Maddie will put that in the chat box as well. And also we want to let you know about next, uh, the next PNR rendezvous session, um, which will be on December 11th, where we will have Dr. Christopher Sanford, who will be presenting about traveling abroad. Uh, whether you're looking for a warm place to visit during the winter months or traveling to visit friends or family in other parts of the world, we hope that you will consider attending that session. And the link, I will put that in the chat box as well. And that's the same link that you can um, use to access this today's session's recording as well as uh, other past ones. We have a couple more minutes if people have uh, one or two more questions. And thanks so much for the comment, Julia. She shares this great tools and presentation to help support and work as a patient advocate. I'm so glad to hear that. Thank you. Well, as always, you can uh, contact Emily if you have further questions, and we really appreciate having uh, Emily here today to present on this uh, very timely topic, and we hope that you will be able to use those tools and resources that she highlighted in helping to um, increase your patrons' knowledge about health insurance. And as they get ready to re-sign up or navigate through the system, thank you so much, everyone and have a great rest of the day.